Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week 12, uh, the week that I forgot, because I am recording a couple episodes all at one time. Uh, coming down here, taking a look at the only game this week, the Brady Gagas lost by about six points, probably two field goals there to the Desert Swarm. Taking a look here, oh, that's right, we had the, uh, we had the Jackson Drive taking on your 10 Wolverines, Jackson Drive eking out a touchdown there at the very end to beat the Tampa Bay 10 Wolverines. Uh, coming on down to the next one here, looks like the Sons of Saban drop their third game against the Carolina Panthers. They are now uh, three losses on the season. Coming on down here, and just as I kind of had thought, they were in a little bit of danger there, 28, uh, 38 to 38-20. The Danger Chickens beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, I was really hoping that would be A-OK, -okay. uh, but again, this is on all Madden with injuries and all that other stuff kind of turned on, so I do get slightly worried whenever I see the Pittsburgh, uh, the Pittsburgh Danger Chickens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Taking a look here at uh, some of the other stuff, the Shore Shots. Ended up taking a, a victory over the Los Angeles Rams, 31-0. The Minnesota Vikings ended up beating Spud Nato, 27-20. 20 20, uh, 20. The Cleveland Browns ended up losing out there to the Mac and Cheats. And then we had uh, the Seattle and Washington. The Fighting Penguins did have a bye this week, which is why they are not on here. So let's go ahead and dive into the first game, the Brady Gagas versus Desert Swarm. Desert Swarm putting up some very interesting points there. 3, 7, 11, and 6. Not sure where the 11 might have come from. Maybe a two-point conversion. We'll see. Uh, but look like Brady Gaga scoring a touchdown at least almost in every single game. Looks like the Desert Swarm uh, swarmed all over. Kind of throwing out some, some good rushing yards as well as throwing some pretty good passing yards. But everything is quite close. 22 first downs of 15 with no punt returns. The kick return yards, 97 to 66. Uh, although eking out the total yards gained, one turnover each, only six to three third down conversions, two fourth down conversions, but apparently the Brady Gagas were not doing so good, and exactly what I thought, a two-point conversion out there. So that would uh, that would probably explain why we're seeing that on there as the 11, 7, and uh, the 3, 7, 11, and 6. 66 and 50%, a lot of red zone sluggage out there. Uh, one touchdown for Brady Gaga, the only one. Uh, two field goals, though, for the uh, for the Desert Swarm. Taking a look here, 84 penalty yards versus 60, as well as a fairly handily winning out there in the time of possession. Let's go ahead and jump over to Brady Gaga, where Brady was 87.2 for passer rating, 255 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception, which is, Brady, you're throwing a lot of those here, bud. Uh, one sack, 20 for 35 at 57 with a 7.3 passer completion. Uh, 7.3 for total yards out there. Najee Harris, 16 carries, 94 yards with a touchdown on there. And then uh, David Montgomery pulling in some reps as well, too, to get things going. With the receiving core, DJ Moore, 5 for 84. Mike Evans taking a little bit more of a backseat, 4 for 54 with a touchdown as well as D. Moore. OBJ getting in there with a couple of catches for 45 yards. Hunter Henry, 4 for 38. Najee Harris, Gage Jr., as well as Reggie Gilliam. Their fullback getting in some yards. It was probably one of those uh, sec fourth down conversions out there. Uh, I have noticed that Brady is spreading the love quite a little bit out here. Uh, kick return, didn't they have? Okay, yeah, look at that, 50 and 47. So OBJ putting in some work on that kick return kick return i always like to take a look at those stats when those numbers are pretty pretty big uh pulling in here for justin herbert an 85.6 282 yards with a touchdown and an interception took two sacks 22 for 35 at 62 percent with 8.1 yards per average christian mccaffrey has not yet been hurt it looks like this season 18 uh, attempts at 616 yards with a touchdown out there and then uh, Miles Sanders, as well as Justin Herbert, doing some scrambling. Looks like they hustled him up a little bit as well, too. And then Antonio Gibson with a couple of carries. And receiving Amari Cooper with 5 for 67. Tyler Lockett getting a couple of looks his way, as well, too, as Keenan Allen. And then Christian McCaffrey, Hayden Hurst, the tight end, as well as Antonio Gibson. I don't think they had any kick return yards. Oh, yeah, okay. Antonio Gibson, 3 for 66 out there. So looking pretty good for that game. Nothing too 100% spectacular. 
the 10 Wolverines losing just by a, a touchdown out there in the final quarter. Uh, looking looking pretty good there, seven through the second, third, and fourth quarter, but just could not get things going. But it uh, looks like the Jackson Drive decided to just drive it home with that final touchdown there in the fourth quarter to put you away. Offensive yards gained. The Wolverines had them there. The rushing yards, absolutely nothing going on the rushing yards. Jackson Drive putting up a, a stone wall, letting them know you are not getting past here. But this is what's impressive. This is what's impressive. Is the, the Wolverines dominated the passing game with basically two and two point an extra two plus uh, two times plus out there for that first downs. Not much different. The punt returns, not much different kick returns. Eh, you know, you, when I, when I see it up around a hundred yards, that's when I get a little excited, but yeah, I am surprised that the, uh, the Tampa Bay Wolverines just could not get it going on the ground there. Uh, and yet somehow they ended up defeating Jackson drive in the total yards, no turnovers for either team. Holding everybody down to some pretty decent third down conversions. Three fourth down conversions. That is how Jackson Drive decided to drive it all the way through. No two pointers. The red zone percentages. Look at that. All four of the Jackson Drive touchdowns coming while they were in the red zones as well, too, is not much going on with the penalty yards. Very, very good teams being very disciplined in the time of possession is not so amazing. But I have to look at this. Matthew Stafford out there, 136.1 passer rating. And then Tua Tunga Vailoa is at 87.5. Stafford had 386. Tua had five with three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, 30 was the longest. Looks like Tua threw a pass. Matt, Matt Stafford took two sacks, 25 for 35 at 71. And Tua was 100% out there. I wonder if uh, Stafford got hurt. Let's go on down here. Uh, okay, yeah, we're we're gonna have to check on that because when when something like that comes in, I'm almost out, I'm almost curious. Uh, Daryl Henderson Jr. Uh, pulling out the runs there in the game, six for twelve. Matt Stafford with a scramble, and then more mo Mostret seven for four. Looking here at the receiving, Kyle Pitts, the tight end, just absolutely dominating out there with with really doing five receptions at 120 yards. Uh, didn't get much much run after the catch. Uh, looks like he had a lot of deep passes out there. Cooper Cup going five for 78. Robert Woods, five for 68. Brandon Cooks, four for 56. Henderson, a couple of catches. Mikel Roy for a couple of catches. And then more set for a catch out there. Look at Looking like a really heavy passing game opportunity out there. Uh, wasn't there a kick return? Okay. Yeah. Robert Woods had a 48 yard kick, uh, 48 yards. Let's go ahead and head on over to the pass passing for the Jackson drive. Jalen hurts at 102.8, 181 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions with the sack out there. 18 for 29 at 62% with a 6.2 yards average out there. Jonathan Taylor putting, uh, doing the workhorse again, 24 for 113, 4.7 with the touchdown. And then Saquon Barkley and uh, looks like Jalen Hurts pulling some scrambles. I wonder if Taylor got hurt during the season, which is why we saw Saquon do a, a few of those ones where he put everybody on their back. Looking pretty good, uh, looking like just a couple of receivers that uh, that Hurts went to. Waddle with four for 57. TJ Hawkinson, six for 52. Uh, Vontae Adams finally getting back into the game at five for 34. And then Debo Samuel with two catches and Saquon Barkley with one of them. So not too bad, not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward here. So taking a look at Matt Stafford here. Uh, his health is good. Looks like... Uh, Oh, he lost on the road. Um, morale a little bit low, but not a whole lot going down there. It looks like he's he's healthy. He's healthy is what it was. So that's, uh, yeah. That's how that is. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at week, uh, the next week here coming up, week 13. We got Jackson Drive taking on the Houston Texans, the uh, taking a look uh, across the board there, the Sons of Saban are taking on the Giants. If I'm okay, yeah, Sons of Saban are taking on the Giants. Looking left to right, uh, the the Fighting Penguins are going to go head to head against the Bears. Uh, looks like the Wolverines are going to play my Falcons. So looking forward here. Looks like the Mac and Cheats are going to try to dethrone the Pittsburgh Danger Chickens. 
I 100% believe that this is going to be the game of the week. Uh, I might actually want to simulate that. I wonder if there's a way that I could simulate that game or even watch it. Uh, but I think what I would, I think what I'm going to have to end up doing is uh, for the Super Bowl because I, I might want to actually end up watching it and, and see how things go. That that'd be really weird. That would be absolutely really weird if my Atlanta Falcons decide to go to the Super Bowl and then play against somebody. So, I mean, I could technically just watch my team out there. And then Spud Nato is uh, going against the Sea Chickens, and Brady Gaga has a chance to go 6-6, six and six, another 500 against the New England Patriots. But uh, look out next week to make sure to see if the Mac and Cheats uh, can pull enough of uh, – pull enough – yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to end that. I, I was looking for uh, – I was looking for a cool little spin out there. But All right. Well, you know what's kind of interesting here is that uh, in week th- in week 12, we have a good little picture of what the playoff system is going to look like here. Uh, taking a look at the AFC division, we have the Sons of Saban sitting at the number two uh, the number two spot up there, playing against the Patriots, with uh, Jackson Drive in there playing the. Cleveland Browns, as well as your Mac and Cheats taking on the Chargers, and then the Danger Chickens with a bye. Running on over to the NFC division, you have the Shore Shots sitting at number one out there. Desert Swarm would be taking on the Wolverines for a, a spot to play the Shore Shots. The Spud Nato sitting at slot number six against the Washington football team, a.k.a. your Commanders. And then the Fighting Penguins would be taking on the Vikings as the four and five team. I'm fairly interested to see what's going on here. I decided to take a look at this real quick, real fast, to see how the divisional playoffs go. I'm excited. I'm thoroughly excited. Looks like these episodes might just get a hair longer because of everything that's uh, going into the videos, as well, too, as now we get a decent little playoff picture going into it. I am thoroughly excited to see what's going on. And this is me truly saying I will see you folks in week 13 out there. Have a great night. Enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you on the next episode.